As President Biden's polling numbers dwindle, some speculate as to who will be the next face of the Democratic Party. For more, we turn to Jackie Jordan, author and media political analyst. Thanks so much for joining us, Jackie. Hi, Natasha. Really good to see you here. Likewise. Thank you. And now let's be honest here. Some Democrats are embarrassed that Biden says that he'll run for a second term. Do you think it's possible for this sitting president to not even win his own party's nomination? Well, great question, Natasha. I think everybody's kind of uh, chewing on that right now. As a media analyst who's kind of who studies media narratives around politics, what I can tell you is that I, I believe that Biden has already done his job. He has accomplished what he is in office for, for the Democratic Party. And so polls don't matter for what their long-term agenda uh, is. And they play the long game. The Democrats are really good at playing long game chess, whereas the rest of us, good American patriots, are, you know, we are focused on, you know, what we've got to do now, what we're doing today, and we're looking mostly at our local environment. Sure. And Harris reportedly is even polling worse than Biden. The border crisis that she was appointed to fix only worsened. Even President Trump went to the border when he was out of office before Harris went. So why do you believe she's risen to the role as vice president? And how do you see her moving forward after these bad ratings from the American people? Well, I definitely don't see Vice President Harris moving forward in any way. And even her... Uh, position to vice president really was such the race card and not necessary, uh, necessarily a competency card. But I'm just going to share with you and go out on a limb here with a really negative uh, worst case scenario uh, that I see is that Kamala Harris will be given a backdoor incentive package to step down. And then uh, President Biden will uh, appoint California Governor Gavin Newsom to the vice president spot. Then Biden will step down before his term is up for all the reasons we think he should step down. And then Gavin Newsom will step up. And then Gavin Newsom will appoint either someone like Stacey Abrams. However, North Carolina probably, they probably really want her in North Carolina and, and will promise her that seat at some other future election. And so then maybe they'll pop in someone like, just, just they laugh when I say this, like Meghan Markle, and who is a long-term chess game. Um, they've, they've been moving her around quite quite readily to get her into a position of prominence here in the United States. Just saying this is a fictional narrative, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. But now you've got Vice President Gavin Newsom with Meghan, someone like Meghan Markle as a vice president. And then President Gavin Newsom pardons Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. It's worst case scenario, but I just have to say it. And all that can happen without casting a vote. All of that would be legal. Then you would declare a national emergency under the guise of monkeypox, and then you hold the old election, as we know here, all the whole election, mail-in ballots with all of the uh, dead names for the next round of elections. Well, I mean, it's, it's fictional, but it definitely could certainly happen. And as you mentioned, California Governor Gavin Newsom is being seen as a rising star in the party despite all of the issues plaguing the Golden State. So do you see him as a possible front runner for the Democratic Party? Absolutely. He has been bred to take this position. PR, again, as that's my profession, PR does not matter to the Democratic Party, does not matter to the Democratic Party ruling elite. Just look at what's going on with Nancy Pelosi right now and her husband. They don't, PR does not matter. So Gavin Newsom is uh, supposed to be going for this position. I don't think he's going to run. I think we might actually see my fictional narrative play out um, in some sort of bad long chess game. But yes, uh, I think that he um, is groomed for this position. His father, you know, used to be the attorney for the JP, uh, J. Paul Getty. So they have, there's been a long, this again, long term planning for this. And he's basically been raised for this, for that, for that role. Oh, interesting. But since identity politics plays such a huge role to the left, do you believe that party voters will support a white male? Or do you see someone like AOC or Pete Buttigieg gaining steam? That's a really great question. I mean, ultimately, what I would like to see if I were casting uh, the reality show for the Democratic candidates is I personally would like to see someone a little bit more middle of the road. I happen to think uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass, who is also considered for the VP position um, that Kamala Harris serves, although I think the Democrats are reserving her for the future mayor of Los Angeles. I think, though, that she'd be a moderate Democrat 
if they were uh, moving someone forward. But at casting their reality show, I'd like to see not such colorful people as, you know, the AOC, um, the Pete Buttigieg, and uh, uh, certainly not uh, Lori Lightfoot um, being pushed up into these prominent positions. <laughs> I've had a, there's been a reality show I'm ready to like sit this one out for. <laughs> it sounds like a, a definitely a reality show. Jackie Jordan, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.